Hey guys, welcome to Black Belt Breakdown. This breakdown features Ethan Krellenstein from the Danaher Death Squad and also TriStar MMA. We break down his match against Josh Bacala from the Shugyo Invitational. Guys, I've been looking at the analytics and we've had 3,000 views on the channel, which is amazing, absolutely amazing. Thank you all for um, supporting. If you like this video, please make sure that you like and subscribe. Um, we've got about 320 subscribers now. Um, so we're looking to boost that up so we can get the bigger, even bigger guys on. That should be on now, yeah? Yep, good to go. Perfect. Okay. So your match um, against Josh Bacalau from Shugyo, which was mm -hmm. uh, last year, right? 2019? Yeah, I think it was like a, a year and a month ago, last uh, May, I believe. Okay, perfect. And um, the reason why I chose this match was there was... Um, there was a lot of technical stuff going on and actually, um, well, well, we'll see, but he actually gets you in the, uh, the Ashigaramis and yes. the way that you deal with them. That, that was particularly interesting. So yes. Yeah. He definitely is a lot of back and forth. He definitely entered my legs, uh, more than I would have liked, but luckily training with all these guys at Henzo's and TriStar sort of prepared me for it Perfect. pretty well. So, so yeah, let's get into it. Go on. Perfect. So yeah, we get started. I sit guard. I think at this point in my training, I'm in the gym at least, I've been pretty much scrambling to the back out of leg entries, both offensive and defensive. So I think that's a lot of what I'm trying to work for here. Heisting with guillotines to get up. He sort of just picks me up over him it seems that um unlike a lot of the other guys there you're happier to go into more of a closed guard situation or an open guard not necessarily half or butterfly yeah i i really like playing that sort of uh knee shield z guard whatever you want to call it like with my uh, left shin across the hip uh sort of as i progress through yeah and also using that wizard to sort of set up triangles if they pressure into you uh, yeah, pretty much through like white, blue, and purple. I was that was my entire game, just shooting triangles from that Z guard. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm pretty comfortable playing from there. Must be fun training with Craig now, then. Oh yeah, fun is not the word I would use to describe training with Craig, but it's very valuable. This guy is so good. Uh, definitely learned a lot rolling with this guy. Insanely, insanely good, man. It's crazy. So yeah, now he starts pressuring into me, posting on his hip with my foot, now my shin. Now this, this match, I think it went like a f nine minutes or so, almost 10 minutes. The one thing that um, I did want to ask as well, if that's mm -hmm. right, is um, especially against the, the Danaher guys, um, there's the, the, the game of guard passing seems to have changed. And it's like knee slides are done in like four stages now, rather than just a, you know, a shot through. Um, there's a lot of leg stapling going on um, and, and nobody's in a rush to sort of get past the guard almost. Yeah. So if you sort of just, at least at the lighter weights, if you just kind of try to rush a knee slide, um, you're going to end up getting your legs entered or you're, you're, you're not really going to end up passing and then pinning and scoring points and, you know, then moving up to isolate limbs once you're past the guard. Uh, if you look at the higher weights, however, like Nicky Rod, for example, this guy is extremely good at sort of explosively knee sliding. Uh, whether you have the underhook or not, whether you have any upper body control or not, you just rushes a knee slide and then reacts off that knee slide like usually he'll end up all the way north south uh usually uh, or also there's cases where he ends up uh forcing our, his opponent to turtle 
Uh, that'll happen in more of the higher weights. At a lighter weight, you can't really just kind of rush a knee slide like that. So yeah, you definitely, especially when they're so uh, adept at entering your legs. Like if you, if you just spam knee slides, you're going to get caught up. You're going to get, you know, sort of tied down with uh, leg entries. And so yeah, you have to do it more, much more methodically. You got to, however you want to do it. If you want to do it from half guard, if you want to do it from sort of the float passing position. Um, but yeah, you can't really just rush it at, at the lighter weights from my experience at least. So yeah, here I'm trying to get on top of him a lot. Like I'm trying to sort of get him to pressure into me more and more, threaten the back, and then get him to put his back on the mat uh, reactively to sort of hide from my back take. And then I think I did a lot of my better work in this match when, uh, when I was playing from top position. The way that you um, almost scissor sweep from the, the knee shield as well is really nice to get the hand to the mat. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it's definitely a, a sweeping, like the, the goal is to sweep, but also the goal is to sort of get him to enter my legs and then I can come up and, and work from there. So here he, he entered my legs. So this is, this is where he, um, you know, this is obviously a, a better position for him. Uh, but like to, to enter someone's legs, to enter cross ashy, is is one thing but to then catch the inverted heel hook is a whole nother you know it's a whole nother story uh if if you are going with a guy who really doesn't have any any idea of hiding his heel or awareness of a secondary leg and you know moving your hips in the right way and freeing your legs methodically then it's pretty easy to catch the heel but if you are in this position like you know 20 times a day like we all are then it it gets pretty hard to actually catch the heel once you've caught cross ashy or inside to cover 411 whatever you want to call it but yeah, yeah it's still a lot of steps left to to go through uh, yeah i put my left knee behind his his hamstring here and, and he mm -hmm. just back steps and yeah and I, i'm trying with my with my other leg here to sort of free myself before it gets too deep but it got it got deep like immediately so i'm just sort of chilling here until he lets go so here, here here's all right so right now if you look my my left leg is the one that uh, theoretically would be inverted heel hooked, right? My, my left leg and my right leg is crossed over uh, my left leg, I believe. Yeah. So, so this leg here, this foot is, is the primary leg that's going to be broken if he catches my heel. And this other foot uh, is going to be helping him control my entire body. Really. It's like sort of gives him an anchor on my hips, the directionality of my hips where the rest of my body can turn. So once I get caught in this position, uh, you know, you're just, you're, you're still calm. It's not really, it's, it's definitely an offensive position for him for sure, but it's not like he's, you know, that deep in, in my opinion, there's still a lot of, a lot of work to, to be done. So what I'm thinking of here is just wait for him to advance a little bit, wait for him to progress to start to reach for my primary leg. Uh, and then once he does that, my right leg, the one with the X on it is going to be free to allow my body to turn and then immediately go into my escapes. And, uh, and if I can, I'll immediately free that leg and then come up to top position and then look to sort of pressure pass. Uh, I, I like people call it smash passing, you know, when both of these are uh, on one side from that cross ashy situation. So uh, from there you can look for darces, you can look for head and arms to the back. Um, yeah. So that was the game plan rather than counter leg lock in. Uh, yeah, especially at this point, I think in my training, I was doing a lot of just countering to score points off leg entries. Um, just sort of what I was working on at that, that phase of my training, I think. Okay. If you look at the leg that's going to be attacked, see how it starts to veer off away from his body here? My, uh, I think my, my left leg, I believe. Yeah, my left foot is starting to tuck into my butt and yep. it gets to the mat. And now here you can see my left foot completely sort of separates from his upper body here. So I'm tucking my shoelaces underneath me here. See that this foot right here? Yeah, so uh, you, this foot right here. Yes, so this, this foot is gonna be the one that he's going to invert a heel hook. Um, and if I can sort of tuck that foot underneath me and then deal with getting my, my secondary leg free and then I'm in a good position to sort of uh, separate his, his upper torso from his lower lower body um and yeah and get some space to sort of lean on him and apply weight in a way that's effective and not just sort of gonna get me rolled rolled under and reattacked. so i can sort of anchor my upper body to his and separate my lower body from his upper body 
that's the, the goal here. So my primary leg is free. Now he's holding on to my secondary leg to try to regain some control. Uh, let's see if he pulls me back down. I sort of forget what happens. And he pulls me back down. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So in these positions, you're like extremely calm. Yeah, there's still so much work for him to, to do to catch my, my heel. Like, I'm going to be turning my left foot. You know, I, we, we practice this a lot. We try to heel with each other a lot. So we're very good at uh, turning our heels, hiding our heels. Um, and, you know, as soon as you start to really dig for my, my left heel, you have to kind of let go of my other leg. Uh, and once you do that, I can start using that leg to, to fish in the, the triangle you have locked, to counter, to start to pummel out, uh, free myself. And yeah, so there's, there's still a lot of, a lot of uh, steps that he has to go through. So I'm, I'm like not too concerned. Yeah, I mean, here it looks like he's trying to ankle lock my secondary leg, but it's, it's going to be hard. And here I, I tuck my foot under and I'm sort of just messing with his uh, – Grips here. Okay, now so now he he graduates up and he's starting to look for upper body control here. This grip around my lat, around my far lat. What he's looking to do is get chest to chest, get past my elbows, and get his his. Uh, see how his his left arm here is sort of uh, laced through my two legs. So he's trying to crush my knees away from him yeah. and cross face me with his other arm. Uh, yes, exactly. So this this arm here with the arrow is starting to lace my legs in order to point my knees to in, in the other direction of his body, so away from him. And this shoulder, yes, this shoulder is starting to cross-face me, and he's anchoring his fingers in my far lat to start to apply some upper body pressure. So I'm defensively bringing in my right arm here to start to prevent him getting chest to chest uh, and starting to free that cross-face. So your, um, your frame, you're looking to essentially, if I can maintain this space here right yeah i'm trying to manage the distance here for uh not i, I don't want him to get chest to chest i don't want him to start to you know pass my guard and, and uh put weight on me here so i'm freeing my head freeing my legs and then i work to spin under and we sort of regard here i think maybe one of us need each other in the face i don't know there he get his hands to the mat with this left arm sort of snaking through to the far quad and I'm trying to get my arm up to his hip here. He's mm -hmm. still putting weights starting to face me. I'm trying to turn the corner. He does a good job with that wizard of uh, staying in front of me here. So we sort of, we spin and disconnect as I'm trying to chase his back and he's doing a good job with that wizard, keeping me in front of him. Sits back down. So. Or, yeah, he sort of, he took an ankle lock grip and he was thinking of sitting back and then just sat back on it. I sort of just nudged him over. Yeah, this, this is a good spot. So he's, he's, he's playing a reverse X card, right? He wants to enter on my, on my left leg again. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's playing reverse X card. For those watching, it's uh, basically just X card with your feet in the opposite um, position. So, like, That'd instead of the foot. Laces on the hip, right? Exactly. Yeah. Instead of the other way around where you're looking to sweep and come up on singles. So this is a good, uh, reverse X heart is a good way to enter in straight into cross ashigami. You lift the guy's hips over your head and you let the guy's primary leg fall into cross ashigami. So that's what he's trying to do. Uh, what I'm trying to do is sort of bait that and get my knee to the mat before he locks a triangle around my hips while getting my knee to the mat. I'm trying to make sure I keep my right arm in as a cross face so I could sort of, let him enter, but not enter deep enough to get my hips to the mat. So just enter in a, in a way where his knees end up on one side of my body and I still have a cross face. So I could, again, I could apply weight and I could start to pass off his leg entry, which is a big part of my game that I like to do. If my right arm was not there, he would invert directly underneath me and, and enter my legs pretty deep. So yeah, I'm trying to drop my knee to the mat and I'm keeping my cross face and in, uh, in an effective spot here. And he senses that and immediately gets up. And I didn't really do a good job at pressuring him from top there. I sort of just hoped I would get to his back as we, uh, as we spun out of control. And we're back to square one.
but luckily it's no time limit, so no pressure. Underhook is, is good, but I, I find the cross face. So the near side underhook, the problem with that is that he can still sort of duck his head inside my legs. Mm-hmm. I like the cross face just because it, it allows me to sort of pry open his body at the end of the lever. Um, whereas the underhook, I'm, I'm trying to separate his body from his, his, like his chest and his ribs from his knees. Whereas the cross face, I'm, I'm moving up to the, the, basically it's just a longer lever yeah. to open up his body. Right. Makes sense. But they're both, they're both good options. Pros and cons to both, I would say. Now here again, I'm just chasing that far hip, chasing the back. And he enters my legs as I'm going for his back. And he controls my secondary leg. And then I'm like, okay, it's going to be another few minutes here. No big deal. Just chill. Yeah, out. I'm just like, I, I yeah. can't do anything until he, until he moves forward. So I'm just, I'm just chilling. I'm like, you know, this guy has to do something in order for me to respond and then start to free my secondary leg to counter. And yeah. There's, there's such minimal hand fighting in this exchange so a lot of it this is sort of comes into what we were saying before about things that maybe go unnoticed Uh, a lot of it is my two feet working together to protect myself from the ankle lock on the secondary leg and the heel hook on the primary leg so a lot of it is your feet working together if if you know obviously hand fighting is going to help but like i really don't feel threatened here for this ankle lock uh, you know, you have to, you have to do a lot more in order to actually get a break from, from this position to, from, from this, uh, yeah, to get an ankle lock break from this position, you have to do a lot, a lot more. What I would start to do is maybe put in a butterfly hook with his left leg behind my right leg. Then you could start to manage distance. Then you could start to put some counter, uh, pressure on, on, uh, my secondary leg. But if your leg is busy, wrapping up my primary leg if, if his left leg is busy sort of helping his uh initial grip right his his cross ashy grammy grip here uh it's going to be really hard to ankle lock that secondary leg so with only this hand uh you know revert uh figure four construction here it's it's not going to be uh super threatening for for breaking my ankle here so i'm not too i'm not too concerned you know when we do situation from this, uh, this position here, as soon as, at least from, from my perspective, like I'm waiting for him to try to transition to that underhook grip, like you're describing, to start to create, you know, distance between my, my two feet. And then you can start to look for that inverted heel hook. But as soon as you let go of that ankle lock grip, I am ripping my foot out of there, pummeling it inside his, his legs here to start to escape the position. I'm not going to sort of wait for him to transition to that underhook grip. And uh, I think he maybe felt that, or maybe he wasn't confident in his ability to switch, uh, you know, seam- seamlessly enough to that underhook. Um, you know, I'm constantly trying to, to sort of take my right leg out of there to start to escape. So I think maybe he feels that and uh, he doesn't want to let go of that ankle lock grip. Okay. Yeah. It's more about controlling the position then. Rather than yeah, and if you try to graduate to, to a better position where you have the underhook, then it's in that transition where the other guy has a chance to escape. So that's, that's pretty much what I'm waiting for. So he doesn't want to let go. He doesn't want to transition because I might escape. So he's holding off this Achilles grip where there's not much threat. And I think he feels that he's not able to threaten me with this, with this grip here. I would definitely go like a sort of a wrapping grip around my, my knee there, my uh, right knee. and then put a big put like a good bend in my leg in order to get my ankle um above his his left shoulder right because to to thread through with his left arm um but again as soon as as soon as he starts to do this his hand is going to come close enough for me to hand fight to peel that hand off and i can start to free my secondary leg yeah here he's starting to look for that esteema grip here it's really hard to finish this without losing some control on my primary leg. And then there we go. Secondary leg free. I start to pummel in and the position's lost. So he seemed to give it up relatively quickly as well. 
Yeah, he didn't really chase it too much. Um, in that position, sort of once you lose a secondary leg, if you're not on the heel immediately, uh, you're going to either be chasing and, and rolling through a lot, or if you're not even close to the heel, which, which he was in this case, um, I don't know. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be tough to, to maintain that position because I'm, I'm, I immediately started pummeling in my other legs. So you sort of start to be in danger uh, yourself there if you let that happen. But often what I'll try and do is sort of uh, get like a seated slide by. So if I sort of scoot my hips out to the left uh, and sort of shuck his arm over my head, uh, I can sometimes get back takes off that, or I could get them to pressure into me and then roll through um, and get on top. But it's definitely, it would be better. I think it would be ideal, at least now in, in preference, it would be ideal if I had my left butterfly hook inside. Uh, but there's, there's also a lot of uh, variations, a lot of pros that um, a lot of things you can do from having this outside foot position. It, it just gives me a better ability to, to stand straight up. Okay. And start to bring your leg in back of you to pressure into him to double leg or to arm drag if he turns back into you. Mm. Oh, he's got the arm under. Yeah, he puts his knee up defensively. And just play it at full speed. Has he gone up? Yeah, it's, I, I think also I'm thinking at this point, like, I've been doing my best work on top. Like, if I stay on top, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to this guy's back. So I'm just applying pressure. I'm, I'm looking. I'm threatening head and arms. I'm getting underhooks. He's doing a lot of work here, pushing me off him. I start to hip switch pass. So that was good, actually. If you go back for, for a second there. Yeah, right here. So I sort of – he's, again, he's looking for that X guard, right? Mm-hmm. And now I start to separate his head from his legs and I start to hip switch. So my left leg here is the only thing holding me in guard. Okay. If I could just clear these two hooks around my left hip, uh, I can pass his guard. So what I'm trying to do is sort of lower my chest, lower my level, and then sprawl my left hip back to strip his two hooks off my thigh. So yeah, if you, if you play it, I knee slide and then, get rid of those two two hooks and now here is is pretty much him recovering the guard here yeah because yes. his legs are so close to his body there and then yeah um, as i extend my leg it separates his knees from his chest yeah so there's like a, a knee switch and then there oh man yeah so nice. thanks man yeah that so i i sort of i threaten a knee slide and then as he brings his feet together to defend I managed to shuck his knees by and I get a scoop rip. So now his shin is still in between us. So I pin with my left shin and I'm starting to apply pressure, putting in a whizzer, making sure his shoulders are staying on the mat. Doing a great job of keeping your foot free as well. Just keeping the knee inside, but not the foot. Yeah. I don't want him to wrap up uh, Ashigarami, uh, half guard, really anything. It's just going to sort of restart the guard passing process. So do a good job at framing on his hip with my shin. And now here he's trying to come up. He doesn't want me to settle in this guard pass spot here. This is so nice. <laughs> and then, yeah, I got my trap grip and I, I tried to go for a, crucifix right there and now here i get my forearm grip right there if you see the tight waist switch to the forearm yeah so you've got you you've got um let's see you've got this grip here yeah so that was the tight waist initially and i, I felt his hand sort of floating around there so i immediately transitioned to the uh basically like a, a it's a it's a pinky grip but it's on a it's on his forearm it's not yet pinky grip how deep down his back is your arm is your is the bend of your wrist just on his shoulder and you're literally just holding on to the trap or are you tra you are, would you be further down so the, that's you're talking about the arm that's around his, his neck right now 
this arm right here. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what I try to do is get a false grip, like in gymnastics, the way they, they hold onto rings I'm trying to get a false grip around the, like all the way around the back of his neck. Okay. Um, yeah. That's an interesting way of uh, explaining the grip as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then from here, it was, it was the body triangle and yeah. And then luckily with that false grip, my elbow is already across his chin. So I'm immediately ready to start setting in strangles. That's really good. Um, I you think his mistake, I think his mistake was his thought process was I can't let him pass my guard. I have to come up immediately. If, if I was in his situation and someone was sort of putting a lot of pressure on my guard and hip switching past, I wouldn't, come up the way he did uh i would just sort of okay this guy's clearly about to pass my guard El, you know it's it's a sub only no time limit so it, it doesn't matter if you pass my guard it matters if you can submit me once you pass my guard so i think what he did was um uh, bad judgment in in deciding to come up to stop me from passing his guard he maybe could have shelled up a little which is you know it's not as as pretty jujitsu wise you know you, you don't want someone to pass your guard and, and all that but in this rule set it maybe it would have been more wise to uh to close up a bit once i passed his guard because okay. it was his it was sort of really opening up when he when he came up and that's a lot of back exposure that he gave me so that that's uh a big part of how i got his back you know he was refusing to let me settle in in uh, past his guard configuration isn't so tight yet my my fingers are slipping off my left bicep here so i just pull my hand back now here i think it slips under his chin yeah Incredible. there we go it's, um have you got any sponsors that you want to shout out or anything uh yeah you know jujitsu roll forever uh ouch med these guys have been taking care of me for years these guys are awesome. So seminars and things like that, what's the best way to get hold of you for those? Uh, definitely Instagram. Uh, just hit me up in those DMs. Yeah, let me know. You know, once yeah, pretty much everything's opening up again. I'm like, I'm finding out people can fly across the border now, Canadian and uh, US border. So yeah, I'm going to be open for seminars, open for instructionals. Um, yeah, just hit me up.